what I want. Can I see? Shh, 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 shh. Okay, we are ready when you are. How do belief and identity intersect? A review of the literature through scientific, cultural, artistic, and historical methods. Uh, this is by all of us, um, by me, Grant Mahoney, Eris Ruff, and also Ian Miller, Chandy Hewitt, Cassandra Peck. All right, so firstly, to understand our presentation, we first have to go over definitions. For us, beliefs are closely held opinions and feelings often form to someone's identity. True beliefs are when a person's belief aligns with reality, and false beliefs are when a person's belief does not align with reality. Reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist, rather than the not notional idea of them. A religious person holds a belief in deity or deities and or set scriptures and or holy books. And this is our more definition. <laughs> the church is a defined religious organization, usually with defined structure and a set of core beliefs. It can be one denomination of a larger belief system or religion, like Christianity. <laughs> Come on. Angel. 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 Or Anglicanism. <laughs> Composite self is a larger self, the pers personality or persona. Whereas identity is one of the many smaller individual aspects of one's personality or persona. The theory of mind is the ability to recognize other people's as desires, intentions, and beliefs. Our group thesis was that people's beliefs about cultural, artistic, historical, and scientific ideals affect their identity. Certain beliefs and ideals as seen in, in the, the previous in the upcoming uh, slides. In the upcoming slides lead to the harmful connotations related to the one to one's identity and how they interact with the world. So for my slides, um, one of the main procedures that they did in testing for beliefs and true false beliefs um, was the locational test, unexpected locational test procedure, which is basically it shows the difference between true and false beliefs. And for the first four slides, it shows the person putting an object in location one and then leaving the room and the, another person picking that object up. Now for the true beliefs, the first person comes back into the room and sees that the other person puts it in location two, while in a false belief, the person stays out of the room and they just move the object to location two. Now what is expected from the true belief is that the person would look in location two rather than location one because that person saw the other, the second actor put it in location two. But for false beliefs, it would be expected of that person to look in the place where they put it, not where the person moved it. In the Bennett study for um, for true and false belief, out of the 25 student, children that they tested on, 12 four-year-olds, 14 five-year-olds had the true, answered the true slash false belief um, correctly, and out of those children, seven four-year-olds and seven five-year-olds justified the answer correctly. But out of all 25 children, um, four four-year Four year olds for the four year old category, 14 justified the answer correctly, and for the five year old, 18 justified the answer correctly. For results um, 6 through 10, they focus, for one of the studies, they focus um, on 76.8% of the children answered um, the false beliefs correct, while in the Bennett study, only um, 20 out of the 25 to 7, 19 seven year olds got their true, true slash false belief correctly. And out of all of them, um, 21 of them justified their um, response correctly. So for um, my research, I covered the Bill Russell test, which is used by 
by GLAD to um, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation to um, collect information in the media about LGBT identity and how they're represented. So from what they recorded, um, harmful, uh, the test is defined as harmful portrayals of LGBT identity in the media based on stereotypes and false beliefs can be carried into adulthood by both LGBT and non-LGBT people, such as stereotypes. Stereotypes as the parlor and the macho stereotypes, which are um, over, uh, over, overdone and over dramatic um, characterizations and over masculine characterizations, respectively, have been influenced mass movies and television shows, which have led to poor representation in favor of the LGBT LGBT community, as tested in the original Russell test. It's defined as the character is identifiable as LGBT, has personality traits other than their sexuality or gender identity, and impacts the plot in a way where if they were removed, it would be a notable change. GLAD in their findings of 2017 showed out of 125 major motion films, only 23 had an LGBT character and only nine passed it. And poor representation can lead to LGBT identifying individuals to think of themselves poorly and can cause non-LGBT identified persons to identify as anti-LGBT due to a false belief used in the media, such as with trans people, they're often depicted as sexual deviants and perverts. And that, in reality, is wrong. All right, the, the identity of the America's poor has been also been tainted by um, misled beliefs and notions and ideals. So, um, C.K. Prilohad, he's a very um, distinguished professor at the University of Michigan, and he's also a famous book writer. Um, he um, decided to cover um, the, the poor representation of America's poor in like, the media, specifically like the news. So, 17% of poverty-stricken families in America are white. But meanwhile, in the media, 66% of America's poor are, um, are kind of portrayed as white families. And black, despite, wait, no, no, sorry. 17% of them are not white, but 66% of them are white in America. But black families are associated with them, the face of poverty, and see as the face of poverty in America somehow. So Martin Gillen, in um, 19, oh, 1990, um, 1989, and 1993, um, he did some research on um, the representation of poverty in America. And so um, throughout, he studied three different news sources, um, the Newsweek, uh, the US News, the World Report, and the Time Magazine, over three years. And over three years, only a small amount of time was spent covering poverty. And most of that was kind of faulty because 64% of the poor people depicted were black, despite the fact in America at the time, over that five year period, only 29% of the poor people in America were black at that time. This um, helps spread the idea that for some, that um, black families or just black people in general are associated with poverty, but white families are associated with success despite the fact that in reality, it's really not that way. This can lead to negative connotations associated with this identity. So these false beliefs and these um, ideals that are simplified versions of the American identity sort of negatively affect the um, American identity and how people view it and interact with it. <clears throat> Many religions and churches' views about LGBTQA members of their congregations are dependent on beliefs that are not grounded in reality, such as because you are gay, you will go to hell, or God hates gay people. These beliefs lead to extreme inner turmoil and chronic stress amongst LGBTQA members of their, these congregations. This conflict between religious teaching and identity leads to feelings of behavior, isolation, depression, suicidal ide and suicidal ideation and attempts. Because of this, LGBTQA members often end up turning away from their faith altogether. As Chuck and Lionel noted in their study, 
Among respondents who perceived a conflict between their sexual orientation and religious teaching, by far, by far the most common response was to stop attending the offending religious institution altogether. forces individuals to mitigate the relationship they have with the church. This five-step model, as observed by Levy, shows the common steps individuals took while mitigating a relationship between a hostile church and their identity. They experienced an awareness of the conflict where one first becomes aware of an incongruence, an initial response to the conflict, a catalyst of new knowledge propelling participants forward, working through the conflict, and a resolution of the conflict, which usually results as noted earlier, in leaving the church. It's important to understand this because understanding the process of conflict resolution is vital to understanding the level of trauma experienced by individuals experiencing or having experienced a conflict between faith and identity. Okay. And what cultural appropriation what cultural appropriation is. Cultural appropriation in West African fashion is the unauthorized or inappropriate adoption of cultures, norms, ideas, or customs. The act of borrowing becomes appropriation when the borrower doesn't show appreciation or credit or respect for the culture borrowed from. This undermines the true essence of the culture's customs, fashion, hairstyles, and anything that is included within that culture. The impact of cultural appropriation. There is the unrecognition or the ignorance of culture's history and significance surrounding the articles of clothing, which equals or leads to the conflict with original culture rather than paying respect to it. Little credit is given, and that leads to overprotection of one's culture, attributes, and due to people removing that significance that the culture holds or their clothing or their language or customs. The imitation of a culture's identity and meaning of unity, love, pain, and struggle is undermined and people remove what makes it significant. According to a source on Infonovia by a Nigerian commentator, Yemi, there was in 2015, Louis Vuitton took Ghana Must Go, which is a bag that is very known and very well respected in Ghana and placed a stamp on it and charged $300 for this bag. There is a man named Omi Piden. He's a Nigerian journalist and founder of Old Niger, a website. And he states basically the history on what Ghana Must Go is. And Ghana Must Go, in 1983, under the rule of Shu Shigari, it was the federal government of Nigeria. And there were many Ghanaian refugees who went to Ghana and were eventually kicked out. They were burned alive. They were killed. A lot of their lives were lost, and things that they had with them were also removed. And they had to go back to Ghana since they were immigrants. This goes back to how a culture is an identity of its own. It is historical and not taken lightly. Ghana must go is something that has a huge significance in Ghanaians' lives and Africans' lives and mine personally. And at that time, Ghana felt that Nigeria was a safe haven for them to go, but that was a place where they were robbed of their lives. So to see that Louis Vuitton takes something that has so much significance and belittle it with a stamp removes and creates a replica of something that is significant in other lives. And these are our sources. We have more on this slide. And it's um, make sure that our sources are credible and our research is credible. questions for the group here um, and I'm going to ask a question basically of each person so I'm going to start with charity could you describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of your group discussions 
Well, I feel like when we were talking, it was kind of difficult because all of our um, like own, I guess, studies were kind of different or varied in a sense. So it was kind of difficult for us to all like come together and try and figure out how each one did. And I feel like, at least now listening to everybody else, um, do their presentation, I saw that how true and false beliefs for mine actually affected everyone and how each for each topic how a false belief from someone who doesn't really know what the topic is or fully understands it will make it into something that it won't that is actually not or destroy a culture or just make people feel bad about them. Thank you. Excellent. This one is for Cassandra. Cassandra, could you give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Brianna's findings? <laughs> so I think that in our group discussions, broader themes of my paper, such as true and false beliefs, stereotypes, that kind of thing, to relate back to my paper as well. This one is for Manasawa. Reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem that your group identified? Honestly, I would say Brianna. Brianna's presentation had, or like her idea or theme, had a lot of impact on like right, just beliefs in our topic or all of our topics that we had to write on. Because her idea, I know, is mainly about art in the media as well, but it goes back to kind of pulling from everywhere on mine as well in terms of art and how the media looks at it. So it helped us to look at how beliefs affect everything, including our topics, our main general idea or thing. So I think it was Brianna's presentation that had the most. Okay. I have one for Brianna. Brianna, what is an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from the team presentation, and why? What didn't get included in this report? And why did you guys decide to leave something out? Um, well, I remember um, in, well, could it be all, uh, all of us, mm -hmm. including, um, well, um, I had an argument based on these two sources. Um, what was talking about um, specifically the portrayal in movies. But um, I felt that um, it, I could take it out of this presentation because while like, movies can be compared with reality, it will be much better to um, compare like the news source because that is something that's supposed to reflect reality at all times. And if that is um, like misrepresenting people, then it's most definitely a more serious offense and most definitely a better thing to use in this presentation. Thank you. Okay, this one is for Eris. In the future, what change would you make to your group norms as you work through a group project? Because you will be doing a second one, not necessarily with this group, but you will be doing a second major group project this year. To our norm. How would you change the, the norms and the processes, and how would you expect that to improve the team presentation? I would like us to communicate more, because I feel like if we sat down, like actually physically sat down in a room together and worked out the seriously and helped each other with our slides, it would have gone a lot smoother and we would have been able to focus more into our um, um, supporting our thesis and just making us be better than what we are right now. But I know that's definitely going to improve later. So. This is for anyone in your group. What would you say that your concluding statement would be for your findings? to give us a conclusion. I have to get it for us. This is writing my thoughts here. We actually 
Thank you very much.